Hey there, Internet friends. Trevor Starkey here with another episode of Trevor Trove Gaming. Apologies for the late upload tonight. Uh, this Sunday episode is going to be going up early Monday morning because I've just kind of fallen into the addiction of Super Mario Odyssey, which came out this last weekend. Uh, my plan was originally going to be sit down and burn through Wolfenstein 2, uh, get that out of the way, and then dive into Mario. And I started doing that, I started playing Wolfenstein, and Wolfenstein is really hard. And I don't remember it being really hard, um, but I think it's probably actually more so that it's just I'm not... I'm, I'm used to destiny in my mind right now, where I can duck behind something and restore my health. And Wolfenstein is not that game. Wolfenstein is a game about constantly making sure you're getting the health pickups and the armor pickups and uh, and like hopping in and out of cover and and trying to do things more stealthily and stuff like that. And uh, I haven't been playing Wolfenstein like that, so I'm not too far into Wolfenstein yet. Um, uh, through like the first couple levels, I think. Um, but I started diving into Super Mario um, kind of like before I went to bed on uh, Friday night and then just all day Saturday and Sunday pretty much I stayed playing with Super Mario. Uh, I've beaten the game. I've got about 500 moons now uh, and so if, if I have like one drawback for the game it is that it is a super collectathon um, which is what I'm you know in the mood for right now so that's fine. Um, I will say that I'm really impressed with like the boss designs in this game. Um, it's it's typical Mario fare where every boss has kind of got like three phases to it. So you know you you do one thing and then it you know has an attack phase and then it gets a little harder to do that one thing and then you do that one thing a third time and um, and that's kind of the gist. But the design of the bosses is interesting and um, each of the bosses kind of requires you to really play with different mechanics. In particular, a lot of the bosses um, come at you while you are in, like, the form of other things. So the big thing, the big kind of hook about Super Mario Odyssey is that you've got Cappy the Hat, which ooh, totally forgot I could be wearing him for this. Uh, so you've got Cappy the Hat, who you can throw at uh, enemies, and you can possess certain enemies, and certain, not even always enemies, certain objects in the world you can possess or capture, as Nintendo likes to call it, and uh, and it's basically you take over that enemy um, for sometimes um, an extended period of time. Sometimes you are limited in the amount of time you control this thing, depending on the enemy. Um, and each enemy kind of has different movement types, different attack abilities, and a lot of the moons and even bosses in this game are kind of designed around the fact that you're not going to be playing as Mario when you encounter them. You're going to be playing as one of these other creatures. And that, uh, it basically, like, if if other Mario games you have, like, three different other outfits, um, this one has, like, 50 that you can kind of um, be a part of. Um, you know, something as simple as a frog, which gives you just a super high jump, to uh, a bullet bill, which you can go after and, like, explode blocks. Um, Goombas, you can stack Goombas, one of the, you know, recurring minigame uh, things in, in each of the different worlds is uh, stacking up some Goombas and getting them uh, to flirt with a Goombet uh, at a certain ledge or something like that. And so, you, like, she'll go running if Mario's around, but if she sees Goombas, she's she's good. She, she likes that Mario stash on a Goomba. World designs are all interesting. Um, like, each, each world kind of has its own, like aesthetic you know you've got the desert world you've got the city world you've got uh, the lake you've got the beach you've got this you know kitchen culinary kind of world um, everything kind of has its own little hook and each one is littered with um, with moons to find discover um, from little side missions to just little out of the way nooks and crannies that you can dive into uh, each world does have kind of like a trajectory of like three or four, like, main little quote-unquote story missions that kind of guide you through that world um, up to the boss of that world. Um, but uh, you don't even have to necessarily beat those. Um, a lot of times when you land on a world, it'll be like, oh, you need to get this many moons to progress to the next world. And you can get those, you know, finding them scattered throughout instead of just going directly for the bosses. I think the bosses are the way to go, and that's certainly how I went, because... Um, each boss will typically net you um, a, a necklace of moons, which gets you three moons for the price of one. Um, 
but yeah, there's just a ton to be found, and then there's even more to be found after uh, after you roll the credits. Um, you can kind of unlock new moons to discover on pretty much every world. Uh, you also have coins uh, that you are collecting, and you can use the coins to purchase um, uh, new outfits. You can use world-specific coins. Each world has its own kind of currency that you're out going out and finding, the purple coins. Uh, and you can, you know, find maybe 50 or 100 coins on any given world. And you can use those coins to unlock, like, that world-specific kind of gear. Like the desert world, for example, that's been shown off a lot. You can pick up uh, two specific outfit sets there. You can pick up sombrero guy and poncho, or you can pick up cowboy hat and like western attire. Um, and those cost, you know, your your purple currency on that world. This is definitely a game that is inspired by Super Mario 64, and basically this is what Super Mario 64 would look like, you know, 20 years down the line, which is pretty much where we're at with it. Um, it's there's a ton of fun to be had. Uh, lots of platforming there are definitely some frustrating things where um, I've you know tried over and over and over again to do something and then you know when you finally get it it is very satisfying but a lot of times I'm just sitting there like Arr! and instead of being smart and moving on to a different moon I just keep trying to bash my head against the wall until I get that specific one so um, you know that's my own stubbornness at play there but overall I'm having a ton of fun with it uh, more fun than I thought I would. I will say that all weekend I've kind of felt like something is missing here, and I don't quite know what it is, but I do often kind of find myself thinking, oh, you know, like, the boss design of this is what I was missing in Zelda um, Breath of the Wild, and I find myself growing weary of the combat style of just jumping on things um, or hitting things with your hat. Uh, so, like, a lot of this weekend has been, like, me th thinking through my head, like, oh, man, like, if this and Breath of the Wild were one game, then, yeah, easily it would be my game of the year. Um, but the fact that they are two distinct things, um, both of which kind of I, f I, I find a little bit lacking in certain areas, Breath of the Wild I find much more um, frustrations with, this I, I just don't know how much more of the collectathon I have in me. It's designed very well in that you've got a constant like feedback loop of just like one more moon, just one more moon. You can just kind of discover one more moon and everyone, much like the shrines in Zelda, everyone does feel like a little puzzle. So, you know, fortunately it's not like I'm finding just Korok Seed after Korok Seed after Korok Seed from Zelda. It is, you know, there is a little bit more thought that has to go into each of these um, puzzles, which is very enjoyable, I think. All in all, I'm having a really good time with it. Uh, there's no real story there. It's, you know, bare bones, just like you would expect from any kind of Super Mario. Um, Bowser's kidnapped the princess, trying to marry her, and he's basically going through each of these worlds and collecting things for the wedding. Uh, each world kind of has, like, the market cornered on one specific wedding uh, element, be it the gown or the cake or the food. Um, that So it's a little kind of, you know cartoony and absurd there, but it's what you expect from a Mario game. Uh, there's definitely a lot of love and care put into it and, and homages to the franchise. So yeah, check it out if you were for some reason waiting on me to give you that kind of go-ahead outside of, you know, all of the hundreds and hundreds of 10 out of 10 articles and, and reviews and whatnot. I, it also has the Trevor seal of approval, so... So those are most of my thoughts on Super Mario Odyssey and a little bit on Wolfenstein 2. Let me know what you've been playing these days in the comments below. As always, I've been your host Trevor Starkey from trevortrove.com. You can follow me at Snarky Starkey on Twitter. And until next time, from here at the Trove, treasure your friends.